Okay, everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze one of the videos from your Coefficient of Restitution Lab. So I ran Tracker, and now I need to put the tennis ball bouncing video into Tracker. Go to the video, filters if needed. We're going to rotate this. I want to be standing straight up. We need to put our calibration stick. That's right here. New calibration stick. In this case, I use the entire meter stick here, so I will. You use your object of known length, whatever that is. And I'm going to use the units of centimeters. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just remember, whatever units you use, if you end up comparing it to a value such as g, uh, or constant, uh, that you need to have G in the units that you use. In this case, we're actually taking ratios of these quantities, so the units should all cancel out. So I'm just going to go ahead and use centimeters, and we need to put an axis on this. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video first, because I'd like to choose the bottom of the axis, close to where the ball hits the ground. That would kind of be where our zero is. And also, so can find out where it starts moving. So about right here. So about here. This point is where I found that to be. So let me go back. So here. Okay. And we're going to put our axis. We're going to kind of move the axis down. So it's just about where the ball hits. Okay, let's go through the second bounce there to see if we get roughly back to the same position. Move this up a little bit. Kind of get as close to where that ball hits the floor as possible. So that's our zero. Okay, so now we go back to the beginning, right before the drop. Right there. Advance uh, one screen at a time, one frame at a time. Okay, start to drop. Go back, back, and one more for good measure. So we're going to begin to analyze the video from this frame. Okay, we want to um, create a. Oh, all my axis is still there. So okay, axis fine. Axis calibration to go. I need to create something else. Now, thank you. Point mass. <laughs> ah, here's our point mass. So we need to create a point mass, which is going to be our tennis ball. I'm going to go right ahead over here. And why? Why, 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 why? I want that vertical position here, not the horizontal. I'm going to zoom in. And notice for this video, I am going to be using the manual tracker. And from this point on, we will always be using the manual tracker. So hit the shift key, and your error should turn into square. Click on the center, click on the center again, and just keep going through this the videos, clicking on the center of the blur as the tennis ball falls. Okay, bounce one. Keep going, keep clicking through. 
Turn away from the computer if your eyes get tired of trying to stare at the green blur on there. And here's our second bounce. And just for posterity's sake, I will we'll include a third bounce here, even though the third bounce is not required. Okay, and there is our your graph. Excuse me, is your graph of the vertical position versus time? So we want to analyze that graph make the analyzing plot full screen okay I'm going to move this down and move this up just so you can kind of see what's happening uh, this is what we would like your screenshot to be we want the screenshot of your vertical position versus time for any one of your drops that includes of course at least two of the bounces so we have the initial drop and we have two bounces okay now to record the data so there are two uh, different sets of data that we need to record from this one is the heights and the other is are the speeds for the heights is the easier thing so let's just go ahead and take care of those first uh, pick the highest point. This is the point right before we dropped it. Okay. And in fact, uh, my video happened to be that that was the point where I actually started, which is kind of cool. Usually it doesn't happen, you know, just like that, but in this case it was. Uh, so H0 in this case would be red from right here. Let me highlight this or something. Do a circle, follow the dancing, you know, uh, arrow over here. It, uh, in this case, H0 is 86.314 centimeters. Then go to the highest point in your first bounce. And notice it will be highlighted over here in blue. Just read that right off. So H1 is 41.429 centimeters. Go to the highest point in my second bounce so h2 would be 22.993 centimeters and so now we have the data for our heights we next need to have the data for the speeds just before and just after each of the bounces now if we take a look at this this line does not go all the way down to zero. The reason why it doesn't is because the bounce actually occurred somewhere between the time that these two frames were taken. So in this case, come up to the analyze button. Let's do statistics and curve fits. We're going to be doing a linear curve here because we have the vertical position. And if we calculate that, we're going to use a line fit for the two points right before the bounce okay and you will read your uh, speed from here so in this case this says negative 3.481 e2 that is 348 centimeters per second now we're recording the speed here, not velocity, so don't worry about the negative sign. It should be negative, of course. You can make that observation because it's going down before the bounce. Then the two points after the bounce. 
So the bounce happens somewhere. Click on the two points right after, and you'll find that the uh, speed after is 209.9 .9 centimeters per second. I'll round that to 210 centimeters per second. Then come over to the second bounce. Notice that these two points are before the bounce. These two points are after the bounce. So take two points before the bounce. Two points right before the bounce. We have um, 265 centimeters per second. And the two right after the bounce is 157 centimeters per second. And that's how to gather your data using fractions.